we're going to look at another way to make a pinhole camera. And so this will be a variation um, using a Pringles can. So um, the nice thing about the Pringles can is it's a little bit different in the sense that, it, you know, it's still that long rectangle. If we look at the overall shape, it's really similar in this direction. But, you know, of course, Pringles are going to have a round can. Now, it doesn't have to be Pringles. I went and got something from Trader Joe's. Again, by all means, don't go out and buy something for this uh, specifically. Also, you don't have to eat the whole bag, you know, or the whole thing of Pringles. You know, you know, just pour them into a, um, a Ziploc or something like that. Same with the cereal. You can also just take that bag out and use it. Um, I don't feel like you have to have three bowls of cereal just so you can do your project. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to do kind of a similar thing. In this case, we're going to cut all the way around and then we'll insert our paper in between. That'll be the really kind of big variation. So again, just use what you have. It could be something else that's similar to this, like maybe like a um, oatmeal container or something else. So again, you're just gonna have to look around the house, see what you have already available, and then just use the supplies that you've got. So let's jump in and take a look at how we're gonna make our pinhole camera out of this. So here's our supplies. So we've got our Pringles can, uh, we've got our, um, box cutter, some tape, some push pins, a ruler, and then I'm gonna use tracing paper this time just so we can see that as a variation. And again, if you don't have tracing paper, you can always just use just regular white paper that you use for like, you know, any sort of um, writing um, or for your inkjet print or something like that. So let's start with using our, our can. So with the can, what we wanna do, similar to last time, let's see how big it is. So to start off with. So it's nine inches. And so last time we went for about a third. So let's just go with three inches here. And um, I'm just gonna look on here. So pretty much where that cloud lines up is at three inches. So I'm just gonna use that as kind of like a visual point of reference instead of making a mark. Now, what's kind of tricky is if I try to draw a line, it's gonna be really hard. You know, I might go like this and think I'm getting it. And then like I might end up way down here. So what I'm gonna actually do is use tape and it could be any kind of tape and just use that as kind of a guide so that way you know again i'm going to go right about where that um, cloud was which is a little bit back from there and then i'm just going to bring this all the way around now there happens to be another cloud on this side which i think is at the same height so i'm just going to go along and my goal is when i come around here and keep it straight that as best i can that those are going to kind of line up so that way i have a, a a circle all the way around the outside and again it doesn't have to be perfect it's just going to give us an idea of where we're going to do our cut and the closer we can be to square the more flat it's going to lay so there's that part now this is going to be a little bit more difficult because it's going to you know it wants to roll um, but like last time i think the easiest thing or the best thing is just to do um, you know light kind of cut so i'm just going to try to go right along that line as best i can you know, and then just do a couple in the same spot until I start to get through. So there we go. There's our two um, thirds and two thirds. And this part here, um, it does have a little bit of a frost to it. You could see about putting it in there. I have a feeling it might kind of break down the image a little bit if we just try to put that, you know, directly in between there. And there's also this dot kind of right in the middle. But you could experiment and see if that will work. I'm going to go ahead and for now just disregard that. So now that I've got the two parts, you know, what I need is my pen hole. So what I'm going to do is just put basically a tack directly through that center as best I can. And so I'm just gonna use one of these push pins. Now, sometimes with things like this, it's kind of mind over matter. You have to just know that you can get the push pin through the metal. Um, sometimes if you're a little bit hesitant, it, you know, you're, you kind of psych yourself out. So just kind of get it in there in the middle. And I kind of will drill down just a little bit and then just start to put some pressure and then pop. There it goes. There we go. You should be able to see we've got a little pinhole in there. So it's nice and clean. So then what we need is just basically our piece of tracing paper. Now it won't take the whole sheet of paper, but we'll just use one of these. And 
I always try to be conservative if I can with certain things. So uh, I'm just gonna put it, you know, in this top corner. That way if I make a mistake or I wanna do something else, I've preserved as much of this paper um, for the future. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna use some scissors. So I had some scissors setting off to the side from the last project. So I'm just gonna cut a little square to start with. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this here in the center. And if I just try folding up the edges, it's gonna kind of bunch together a lot. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna grab a pencil really quick. There we go. And I'm just gonna make a quick little circle around here. So I know about where I want my Pringles can to be. And then that way I'm gonna use that as a guide. And what I'm gonna do is make some little incisions. So I'm just gonna cut And what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow the paper to be able to fold up a little bit more uniformly and not bunch up quite so much so I don't have a big you know, area where there's three or four folds on top of it itself. There we go. So then I'm gonna place this in the middle. And then um, I'm just gonna take a, a several, actually I tore a piece accidentally earlier. So I'm just gonna use a few of these little pieces just um, to help kind of tack it in the beginning. And then once it's been tacked in place, I'm gonna attach it to the other side using some of that Gorilla Tape so that uh, it kind of holds together nicely. So I'm just gonna get a few little pieces here. So then I'm just gonna start lifting these up and tacking them in place. So what I'm hoping for is just for this to be relatively flat, um, and free of wrinkles. Then I'm just gonna take this part here and we're just gonna reattach this. And so again, I was just really making sure that those were kind of tacked in place. And then I'm just gonna use a piece of Gorilla Tape which will cover that whole area so that it's nice and dark. There we go. And I'm just gonna press and get on there. So that should keep it relatively dark inside of there and keep that pretty flat. So that's our Pringles camera. And we should probably take a quick look outside, kind of see what it's looking like and at least see what sort of image it's forming. You know, if it's still a little bit dim, you can always open up this hole just a little bit. So let's go outside and take a quick look. All right, so here's our camera. So there's so much light that kind of leaks through here. So we might want to actually make something that's going to help block some of that light because we don't want to illuminate the inside. If I block with my finger, so it kind of creates almost like this reddish. If we look here, you can see there's there's image in there. It's just the color is kind of thrown off because of the <clears throat> kind of that red that's filtering through my fingers. So there's definitely image being formed in there, but it's the color gets a little bit thrown off. It makes it a little bit difficult to tell what we're looking at. So we'll look in a second. So we're just gonna look the tin foil. Let's see how that. Helps. So it looks like it's working pretty well. Um, you know, it, of course it's a little bit dim because it is just a pinhole. So, you know, really give yourself some time for your eyes to adjust. The, you know, the longer you look, the, the more your eyes are gonna, you know, the pupil's gonna keep dilating and opening up. It actually takes almost 20 minutes to fully adjust to the dark. So you'll notice the longer you look, the more it's gonna become clear. And, you know, just kind of go around like this a little bit, you know, look up and down. Things are upside down and backwards, so it may take a few minutes to acclimate to what it is you're looking at. And depending on where you cut this, again, this is gonna change what the focal length is. You know, if it's if you ended up putting it way back here, it might be very zoomed in, and it might make it, you know, a little bit harder to kind of tell what you're looking at, because it's looking at a smaller cross section. Whereas if it's too far towards the front, it might be so wide angle, also that things are so tiny that you have trouble figuring out what, what it is you're looking at. So. Give yourself some time, play around with it. Use your camera, you know, record video a little bit or take some pictures so we can see what is being formed inside of your camera. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it is that you're gonna create with your uh, Pringles camera.